What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. It's dramatically new. It's an RCA Victor exclusive, made possible only through years of research, inventions, and innovation. Living stereo, played on a record. The vinyl has a richer sound, mm -hmm. and it's more. I feel like I'm partaking in an activity mm -hmm. when I'm putting on a vinyl, flipping it over, setting the needle down. It's a lot less passive. Yeah, it is. It's more. You can even make it into like a little ritual, mm -hmm. you know? It's really like intimate. It's like an intimate experience. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. yeah. I like coming home after a long day of work and just putting on a record. And I saw records made, music literally written in wax. The first step, I learned, is to pour a thin layer of molten wax onto a hot plate, the beginning of the master record. A hot flame melts all bubbles and flaws out of the wax, which is of the purest possible grade. This is done in a sealed, dust-proof and air-conditioned room where the temperature is thermostatically controlled. Hey, what was your first record that you bought on vinyl? Very first that you can remember. Well, you know what? I didn't buy, I never really bought any vinyl when I was a kid. I bought since I, because, you know, I, you couldn't, you didn't have a vinyl men. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you didn't have a vinyl men. So vinyl you, men. you had a Walkman so I, or whatever. So I, I, I was buying. You can stick it in your backpack, though. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't you break my records like exactly you could break them um, easy. But no, I uh, I would buy tapes. I would just buy tapes or whatever. So I was buying tapes. So I never really bought vinyl until really a few years ago. So I think the first actual vinyl record that I bought, real like as an adult, because I'd never bought one as. That a you kid. actually like physically went in the store, walked in, listened yes. to it, and then you walked out with it. Yes. Well, actually, you, I think you were there with me. That Venus and Mars record that oh, Paul really? McCartney, that was like the first vinyl wow. I really bought. And I might have bought, actually, you know what? If there was anything that I did buy when I was a kid, it was um, a couple of Christmas 45s. I think I That's did some get good some. That's good stuff. I got some, like, killing, like, Christmas 45s. You got Jordan Mathis, didn't you? No, it was Little Richard. Little Richard. It was Little Richard, Richard. Little Richard <laughs> doing some, uh, some Santa Christmas. Claus, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Santa Claus, shut up. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was something like that. So is this your first vinyl record that you bought? The very first uh, vinyl record I bought, I must have been around 11. Tell me a little or, bit more uh, about that. 10 years old. Uh, it was during the Batman craze, and that came out around 1966. And Batman, as everybody remembers, was real popular. It also had a very catchy theme song. Definitely. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Batman, even the Kinks recorded their version of that song. But this was an album that I saw in, in a local Roses store. Moses. In Farmville, Virginia, and it was in the bin, and it had all these superhero themes: Tarzan, the Green Hornet, Batman and Robin, uh, Flash Gordon, Captain Marvel Jones, the Shadow, the Phantom, and the Mickey Mouse March. Well, 
I, in particular, wanted the Batman theme. And I didn't know where else I could get it. So as a kid, I just, this is what I wanted to get. Was it the right theme that you wanted? No. As a matter, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it wasn't. I was originally disappointed in it. Um, <laughs> but as years, even a, a few months or even a year went by, I began to realize, but you know, the music on here is actually pretty good. And I'm convinced that it was probably studio musicians and they were trying to capitalize on the superhero phenomenon of the early, well, the mid-60s. So what was your first vinyl that you owned? Oh, yeah, man. It was uh, like some 80 cart, you know, uh, 80s cartoon joints. Like I said, it was like um, Green Lantern, Masters of the Universe, but... Uh, and they had that on vinyl, really? Yeah, little 45s, man. Man, do you still own it? Or you, nah, you don't really know where it is? It. I wish I, I okay. could, man. But yeah. I, I can still hear it in my head, like flashing back to actually listening to it. And the precise engineering business of transferring the recorded sound from tape to a disc called the Lacquer Master. This disc is the grandfather of the records to come later. What was the first vinyl record that you ever bought? Oh, it was, it was at a yard sale. It was Hello Dolly, the, that Louis Armstrong album. Really? Yeah, I just did a project on, I, I was in the second grade maybe, or the third grade, and we had to do a, a book report or project or something on someone. It, it had to be a biography. You know, like a so in the second grade, you went to a yard sale and picked up Right, it was my That's next door amazing. neighbor, I think, and he just passed away, and so they were having a yard sale, like he was a very old man, Mr. Milton, I think. If I go back to when I was a kid, the first record that I handed was on vinyl. It was a record by my father's record company. It was a 45, uh, and it was Detroit, Michigan, and it was yellow with the label on it, it was black, and it was yeah. really cool, you know, and I was really excited. Uh, but I didn't know how much significance that it was until uh, probably within the last five years because Kid Rock recorded that single. Which song was that? That's Detroit, Michigan, uh, written by uh, Mike Hanks, uh, Mac Rice, and I think another guy, Carol. I can't think of his last name, but it was on the D-Town label. Wow. Yeah, I think it's just sort of like love of music and especially of records, you know, and I, you know, it's just, you know, always been drawn to records anyway, just, I don't know, I mean, it's just, I grew up with them, you know, 41, so, you know, so it's obviously like, like, connection because of the music and it's just tangible. It's tangible, it. yeah, no, that, yeah, and you know, it's just like there's so much of it out there, too, on, on vinyl, like, you know, it's just every day you find something new, you never... You know, never seen before, you know, it's like, which is the greatest thing about having a record store. And MP3 was definitely a thing when you guys opened, like, oh, yeah, I, like, what, what really inspires you to just be like, you know what, I don't care, like, I, I want to. Well, I've always sort of been into tangible things, like, I don't know, it's just, you know, obviously, like, I have things on MP3, you know, stuff on my hard drive or whatever, you know, but. It's, it, to me, it's really weird. It's really like DJing, you know? I mean, I DJ a lot of 45s, but I just, like, I can't. It's hard for me to DJ something I don't see, because I just don't trust it. The records are just so weird and magical. It's like a weird technology. This is like, like, who thought, like, that would work? You know, when you're playing, like, MP3s or just have your iTunes playing, you honestly aren't really paying attention to what you're doing. Like, when you have to put a record on, you are paying attention to, you know, like, 
you have, you have to put it on there and put the arm on it and you know and make sure you actually listen to what you have. The playing time of the music determines the number of grooves per inch that will be cut into the record. The sound dynamics of the music determine how far apart the grooves must be. Loud passages need more space between grooves. Soft passages need less. The cutting machine automatically spaces the music grooves according to the sound signal it's receiving. Like nothing beats vinyl sound, man. Like the analog, you can't, like it's, that's actually physically capturing sound. You can't beat that. It's like an audio visual with the textures. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You can't beat that type of quality too. And that's what we've been missing, all this digital compressed Pro Tools, that's right, Pro Tools, flat shit. Mm. Oh, Fuck, oh. where am I get my soul wow. from? They be cutting off band waves. I mean, yo, it's a desert It's all compression, here. basically. Yeah, we cutting off complete band waves. I think that there'll always be people, and I've done it too, jump into the new formats and so forth and try new things, but there's always going to be that part that people want quality. They want quality of sound. They want something that sounds good. And there's some people who are not, they don't, either they can't distinguish between a better sound or a better picture or they're not that concerned. Uh, I remember several years ago I had a um, conversation with a customer and I was saying, uh, and she said, I bought. I don't buy many albums uh, or CDs. I buy, uh, I just get stuff from my iPod. And I say, but the sound quality isn't as is good. And she got indignant. Really? Yeah, and she said. She got upset, like, are you trying to say I don't have a good musical taste? She said, taste? My, iPod, <laughs> my iPod sounds perfectly good. I mean, she, she and, I, and I thought to myself, I think the reason is that a lot of people will, and I think she was just extreme on that. Be oh, I think a lot of people have never heard a good stereo system in their lives. They have never heard good equipment. And you don't have to go high end. You don't have to have the most expensive equipment. But you've got to have something that reproduces the sound in such a way that quite frankly, you hear that bass as a thud. But for those who have the equipment, it also permits two system or stereophonic playback in the home. There are other high fidelity requirements, such as presence, definition, clarity. Because it has a sound on it that you just can't really get from anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? It's like like a almost sound like a sofa. <laughs> <laughs> like a oh, sofa. Like it's comfortable. It's, it it's sleeps like, better. It's the sound wave that's, that's that comes through is comfortable. It's like it's more it's nourishing. Like it's more nourishing to the ears, basically. Yeah, it's just all yeah, oh, the crackling. Is it just? It feels like it's an extra, like a presence within the sound. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that, right. It just feels like uh, something's there. Like it, it gives it kind of like a full feel for some reason to me. You put a needle on and and it starts spinning and it's very shiny and you see these concentric. Uh, Ring, you know, these rings. It's like the striations of the concentric rings. Right. You see them shine along just one area where the light is coming from, you know? Yes. And, and it's like you're seeing a physical thing spin and do its work after you have put in the work of pulling something out, putting it on um, a turntable or record player, you know? It's do you think more it's more of an intimate experience because as opposed to an MP3 or a cassette tape or a CD? Because you can touch probably, it and you can probably, read the linear notes? Probably. Maybe somebody subconsciously, when doing this and pressing play, they're not thinking, I'm the reason Katy Perry is being played. Because all they have to do is go click, and it's not a big deal. Yeah, but you have to pick up a record. Yeah, you have to pick up a record, table. set it on the turntable. Yes. Like, if you do that at a party, let, let's say you're a DJ at a party and you're only doing this iPod thing. Someone comes up to you and they're like, hey, man, thanks for playing this. You're like, oh, what did I do? I did nothing. I just hit the button. Baby. Right, right. But, you know, if you've got records or something and you're going back and forth between those two turntable record players that you have, uh, 
Is that technically musicianship in a sense? It, You're putting the needle it, on maybe, the grooves. Maybe the it's groups. closer yeah. to musicianship, okay. you know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it is musicianship. It, it's about as musical as I am with a musical instrument, <laughs> is what it is. Um, yeah, but there, there's something about it where if somebody compliments your DJing skills with records, you probably think, oh, maybe a part of that was what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It was maybe because of me. I like that there's two sides to it. There's a bit of an experience there. Mm -hmm. You can't just press play. You know, records, there's two sides to it. And you can, you can find the groove. Like, you can look and, and place the song and then kind of evolved into cassettes where you, you could automatically go to the next song but it was hard to you know jump from one to the next or the tape might get stuck yeah yeah the tape <laughs> might get stuck and then yeah. and then cds it was sort of the same thing and now everyone you just sort of dump all your music into a bucket and yep. swish it around and pick out whatever comes um which is cool i think everyone has a different listening experience you know when you talk about the significance or the importance of this format it's another option for people of intellect because you get the opportunity to choose what you want to play it on, how you want to hear it. And most connoisseurs of music would go back to the vinyl, uh, maybe spreading the word again about how analog sounds better than digital. You think it's because of it's tangible and you can look at the linear notes and you can touch the record itself? It's like it's more intimate? Is that why people still like to go out there and just buy that record? Well, no, I don't. I don't think the. You know, it's interesting that you use the word intimacy with uh, analog. I think that that doesn't happen until you actually sit down after you put it on the device itself and play it. Then it becomes intimate because it's within the room that you're sharing the space in. It's so it's a connection between right. the listener and the record. Right. You know, because with digital, you could put it on and it happens so fast. Uh, once it's in the machine, you know, if it's in a device, like you pick up a device, you press the button. But what, what's so cool about analog is that, or let's say vinyl, is you have the record itself, the hard copy piece, you put it on the device that plays it, you put the needle on it, and then you get a chance to sit back and enjoy an open air, open air sound, right. you know, this particular device doesn't happen with digital like that. I really love uh, the sound of vinyl and, um, you know, I mean, of course, growing up as a kid, I, you know, we, we had vinyl in the house, but I think that once once they took vinyl away and then you and then you started to see it coming back again, I think you really started to appreciate, you know, uh, uh, how how brilliant the, uh, the that sound form is and, and uh, everything that comes with it. We wanted to hit you guys because you guys are sort of at the forefront of this not not the new wave of it but just like you you're you're seeming to blend like um the fashion of vinyl which is coming back in like it's cool to collect vinyl again i don't know if everyone's uh necessarily listening to it as, as much as they should but it's definitely fashionable to listen to it but you guys are also merging the vinyl and also like the new culture like the fashion and the music and like what made you guys want to do that uh, well, we started Turnstile in June of 2003 mm -hmm. while I was a student uh, studying fashion awesome. at BCU awesome. Awesome. and also a DJ. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what about you? Yeah, like, uh, so I, you know, I, 
I first started spinning during the early days of the rave scene and mm -hmm. stuff like that. What, what, what year was that? Oh, um, when you start spinning, like, 95? Uh, yeah, around 95, 96, something like that. And, um, you know, back then, the parties were a fashion statement. Mm -hmm. Everybody dressed up, everybody, yeah. you know, went, went beyond to try to, you know, do something just amazing, whether, you know, whether it's... It's definitely your, not like it is now, where people are wearing less clothes and furry leg warmers, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. there's a little bit more, like, avant-garde kind of, like, style edge to it. Mm -hmm. Back then, a little bit more techie kind of streetwear, and that's kind of the stuff that we have continued to carry in here mm -hmm. for, like, the last 11 and a half years. Yeah, so when we thought of a, a record store, the fashion was just kind of made sense to us, because mm -hmm. it was already there, it's when, a, you know, for us in the rave scene. There. You have to have something to wear out to the club. Yeah, and yeah. it's a culture. Get your music, too. get your clothes. So when you opened up the store, um, how was the vinyl business booming in general? Yeah, it was in free fall. It had, had, had already free fall, at least, at least the vinyl side of it like mm -hmm. that, because it was the time when everybody was kind of rushing over trying to find the, the next new thing mm -hmm. and digital and stuff like that. And that was the time when the iPod was becoming, right. mm -hmm. I just come out. Right. And a lot of the digital download sites. So we were kind of, um, maybe it wasn't the best idea to mm -hmm. open them, but I mean, obviously it's worked out. Yeah. Yeah, so we stayed true to that. You know, and that, that was kind of the idea of the store, that it's not just about vinyl, it's about the whole culture mm -hmm. of, of the rave movement and underground techno and drum and bass and all that. So. Where people can meet and kind of talk about tracks and tunes and what's going on this weekend or what, you know, what's happened last weekend or, you know, DJs they like. It's kind of, um, we have kind of aimed for it to be like a hub of mm -hmm. the scene. I like that. Where you can come and get, you know, your music and your fashion and learn about music and help other people learn about music and, you know, experience different music that maybe you wouldn't have normally picked up or you know recommendations things of that nature contrary maybe the popular thought i've heard that uh, the ipod actually more so killed the cd and led way to sort of like people getting back into vinyl because you didn't need the cds but the vinyl was a different art and also like it it it, it was nice to have the vinyls and it sort of killed the cd did you guys see that at all yeah, well, for me, CD and um, iPod or whatever, it's all just digital, you know? Okay. It's going to have different platforms, yeah. it's going to have different uh, delivery devices, mm -hmm. and that's going to change throughout history. Um, but, you know, an analog, pure analog sound on vinyl, if they can figure out a way to bring analog to us other than vinyl, that'd be great. Yeah. But, you know, vinyl is the way to go. It's the tried and true method. 